My name is Mary Uter. I was a cardiac ICU nurse for 13 years at Bellevue Hospital in New York City. And I serendipitously was in cardiac as a nurse. I didn't choose it, it chose me. And it was ironic because my parents both died of heart attacks years before I became a nurse. So I thought, okay, I'm going to learn about how to prevent this in happening to me. And what I learned is that patients actually didn't really get better in this system. The doctors prescribed, they diagnosed and then prescribed, and then they were treated and treated, the patients. So you're sent out into the world without any kind of plan really to get better. So Western medicine is excellent for finding the core issue. However, it leaves us at putting a band-aid on the core issue. So you've got hypertension, you've got side effects from a pharmaceutical injection, and you're given a, a beta blocker or a statin, and that's not stopping the root issue. So the underlying problem is still happening. So what happens is people get older and they're sicker, but they're being patched together versus living longer and living vibrantly with holistic means of doing the same thing that those medications do and restoring the body to wellness because our bodies have a natural propensity to heal. It's called homeostasis. And at a certain point, our bodies just give up because they've had so many toxins and things that we've eaten, things that we're breathing, things that we're putting on and in our body. And they've moved from homeostasis into ill ease to dis-ease, a full disease process. I left in 2019, wrote a book, Heart to Soul Cardiac Wellness, over the course of COVID. And so I use my time productively. And, and then from the book, which is static, I created a cardiac wellness program using holistic means to replace what those medications are doing with the goal of getting people healed with a new lifestyle that we're building and off their medications so that they can live their best life. For example, heart attacks, most heart attacks, the person has a second one within five years. Heart disease is 80% preventable and it's reversible. And what I wanted to talk about is the standard American diet is a big factor, not the whole factor, but the hugest factor. So the standard American diet that we eat, and we'll talk about what that is exactly. It's, I call it sad, sad Sam, and I've added a Sam. So the standard American diet leads to the standard American diseases, which leads to the standard American medications, which is sponsored by standard American media. And what do I mean by that? How am I dragging the media into this? So we have our standard American diet, which is filled with processed foods. It's filled with seed oils, which are, it's akin to pouring battery acid into our arteries. We have food scientists who work on making our food uber palatable. So they use natural flavors, which is a contrived chemical composition. It's not from a real live fruit or vegetable. And they create these food products. So the, the moral of the story is these processed foods cause inflammation along with seed oils. And the lesson here is if it's made in a plant, forget it. If it is a plant, it's great. And whole harvest, what I love is that it's whole food plant-based. And whole food means it's as nature intended it. So it's all the vegetables as nature intended, no, no added ingredients to it. So if you look at McDonald's French fries in America, they have 19 ingredients, I think. So is that real food? That is not real food. What happens is the standard American diet that we just talked about leads to the standard American diseases such as heart disease, all kinds of cardiac events, inflammation, which is unseen. We don't know that we have an inflammatory response in our body. Cancer, diabetes, obesity, it leads to so many diseases that are really reversible. And then from those diseases, we of course get put on the standard American medications. And there are ways to reverse this whole process, starting with what we put in our body to 
send nutrition down to the cellular level. And then the standard American media is advertisements for drugs directly to the consumer. Also, companies like Pfizer, all the, drug, all the major drug companies are sponsoring these media channels like the big CNNs, George Stephanopoulos, whatever these shows are, they are sponsoring those shows. And so can they say anything or have any guest on that's speaking against the narrative? They cannot. So this is where we are. And what can we do to get away from this big food, big sickness, big pharma coming in to help and big media? We can take matters into our own hands. And that's where we're healing our body ourselves with the foods we put in it and doing things like everyday things that can help heal us. So what we do in my cardiac wellness program, it's called the Heart Health Accelerator, is we start with your mindset. Um, and why mindset? A lot of cardiac patients suffer from depression. Their life has been taken away from them. Their autonomy has been taken away from them. They suffer from anxiety. It's anticipatory fear of another event. They suffer from fear. They suffer from just a, a lack of support because they have all these concerns and worries and they may not know if they can work again or be the caregiver for the family. And they're told, oh, you'll be fine. And no, they feel like they're not going to be fine and they really have a lack of support. So what we do first is we start with mindset and that is working on how to calm the body, how to learn to prepare for this new information that you're going to learn and to prepare for how we're going to build your new lifestyle. And when you have a calm mind and a calm body, meaning your body is in a parasympathetic nervous system, autotomic nervous system, it means that your heart is not beating fast. Your blood pressure is relaxed. So we're calming your mind. It's also calming your gut. And why is that important? Because if your gut is not ready to receive the nutrients you're going to put in it, it's like eating sand. Your body is not going to absorb or process as it should. And your body is going to be inflamed because you have hormones also. And we talk about your body and your cells because what you're thinking is so important because if you're thinking or worrying or have anxiety about something that hasn't happened, but you're anticipating something happening, Every cell of your body is listening to that. And it's saying, okay, hormones, get set, get ready. And you're putting your body into a state of fight or flight when it doesn't need to be. So that's the first thing we do. The second thing we do is baseline labs. You can't manage what you're not measuring. So we get your baselines and any testing that we can so that we know what areas we need to really focus on. And then from there, after our labs, we start in with dropping inflammatory foods, because inflammation is the root cause of most disease processes. If we can get rid of that, then it's opening the way for healing, and that helps our gut as well. One of the biggest inflammatory foods is dairy. Dairy is so toxic to the human body, and it's really bad for the animals. And we're, if you think about it, human nurses their baby, and we wean them. Well, so does another species. We're going over to another species where they have their own fats, antibodies, hormones, and nutrients for that species. And we're coming over here as humans, taking it, putting these animals on machines where they get infected, they're on antibiotics, the milk has to be heated to take out some of the, the pus, but it's a nasty thing. And people are taking a pill for lactose intolerance, when your body's saying, I'm not supposed to have this. In fact, that own species isn't supposed to have it after a certain age. It's meant to grow a baby bovine very quickly, or baby sheep or goat, whatever the, the animal is. And there was an interesting study done in Europe where they had these little tiny cups and they were giving away free samples of this new milk. And when people drank it, they told them it, it was dog milk. And people just got sick and had violent reactions. And it shows how we have propagated that cows are okay, but dogs aren't. 
So who made the decision that cows are okay? It shows you how you can normalize something so that it's accepted when really it's not good for us. So we work on getting rid of inflammatories and dairy is also really bad because the casein, the protein in milk has been directly linked to breast and prostate cancer. And there's a book out by a famous research scientist named Dr. T. Colin Campbell. He was a scientist up at Cornell and he wrote a book called The China Study. And he found the link between breast and prostate cancer. And if you look at those companies, there's a certain company that focuses on women's breast cancer. They're sponsored by dairy companies. So the very food that is making these women sick is being, is sponsoring this. And it's all known, but this is how the machines stay, keep on going. Um, so after that, we work on other holistic means and techniques. For example, things that you can eat that will help your body. So for example, cinnamon, this, these are tactical strategies that I use in, in my program. So cinnamon can help to lower blood sugar and blood glucose level. So when you stack on little habits like cinnamon and slash all these little habits that we implement week by week, I call it habit stacking. So when you start habit stacking, it's like compounded interest as it used to be in the bank, compounded interest that adds up to changes in your lab work. And when you have changes in your lab work, you can get off medication and start to feel better and start to enjoy your life and stop worrying and get your life back better than before. So that's really the ultimate goal. My initial advice for someone starting out on a whole food plant-based journey is that, oh boy, your taste buds rule. And those suckers are ruling the roost sometimes. And it's a mind trick that you could have that but you're choosing not to because every day you're showing up with discipline and consistency to build your new lifestyle. And the minute that you give in to your taste buds for a fleeting situation, you're going backward in your momentum of building that new lifestyle. Now, that's not to negate that you can never have a burger again, or if you're at a family's barbecue and you're from Texas and there's the best barbecue in town, by all means, have that. Don't deny yourself if that is something that means so much to you and you want to enjoy the day, but get right back on it. And these kind of slip ups are going to happen and that's fine, but just get back on it. Don't just stay on that train and keep riding it. Then you'll go back to where you were before. And I think it's a good idea also to get a support system, whether you have a buddy that comes on board with you and is exploring new vegan or vegetarian restaurants with you, or you're cooking meals together, or maybe your spouse and you're trading off recipe ideas, or introduce your family so that your family now becomes your support system because they're involved and understand what you're doing too. So those would be my big things are specifically the taste buds. The taste buds are your worst enemy and understand that you have been trained specifically by food scientists to have these cravings and over time you will not have those cravings because guess what your body is going to be craving how it feels after you have these cleansing and whole foods. Do you find that it takes roughly three to four weeks for someone's taste buds to adjust and change to that new way of eating? So it's individual for everybody depending on how far down you were in the rabbit hole of Cheetos and Doritos. But it does take a little bit of time, like two to three weeks to start. But after that, you have a morning smoothie. Your cells, your body feels energized. You feel good. I would encourage people to, when they eat, start realizing how they feel after their meal. When you start to understand and, and listen to your body, it becomes clear what's good and what's not for you. And most people don't do that. So a lot of people have that afternoon slump after lunch, and they've had a big carb laden meal but full of gluten. That's your body signaling maybe there's some insulin sensitivity in there even maybe you're becoming pre diabetic. So listen to your body and what your body's telling you because really that's your best friend. And we don't listen to it and people don't even understand to listen to it. 
So my website is heart to soul CW, and that's all spelled out www.h-e-a-r-t-o-s-o-u-l-c-w.com. It stands for Heart to Soul Cardiac Wellness. And my book is Heart to Soul Cardiac Wellness. It's an inspiring plan to holistically recover and prevent heart disease. My program is called the Heart Health Accelerator. And my program was built off of the platform of the book. A book is great, but it's stagnant. And my program, I'm always adding to it. Plus, you have the bonus of working with others and having your own built-in support group and meeting new friends. So it's very dynamic. 